Hey, it's me, Pastor D, and I am here to welcome you to the sisterhood on tonight. Good evening to you, Lisa Camper, Katrina Arnold, and the other people that are on the broadcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now come on in here and share the broadcast. Start sharing right away. You're going to be excited. We got some great um, conversation for you this evening. Hey, Rachel Cheney. Rachel, you are faithful. I want you to know faithful and dedicated. She had a situation at her home today. Yes, she is still here on the broadcast with the sisters. That's what I call faithful. And don't you ever never, never let anybody tell you, you don't have strength. You have the strength, girl. You make things happen. Good evening to your mother, Cat. Welcome to the broadcast. And everybody that's coming on, come on in. And don't forget to share the broadcast tonight. Hey, my Beverly. Love you too, my beautiful daughter. Hey, man, beautiful sister. Good evening to you, Brittany. What's going on, Britt? Britt. Hello, hello, Minister Brooks. Come on in, everybody. Share, share, share. I got some great guests that are coming on with me to share some great things with you on tonight. And so I don't want you to miss a beat. Hey, Marva. Marva Wade from Chicago. We so I tell you, we have people from Chicago, South Carolina, Atlanta that comes onto the broadcast from Lacey and from Olympia, from Seattle that come on to the broadcast, Lakewood, and right here in DuPont. That's right, DuPont we represent. And so um, I'm just always so grateful to have you ladies that come from Texas that are on here. And so I'm so grateful that you choose to come onto the broadcast each Monday night. I was just telling my son today how I want to go back from Georgia. People, I want to go back and do it in person. And um, he was saying, and I said, but I got so many women that are from other places and I don't want them to miss out on the goods. Amen. So I'm staying on the broadcast. When I do shift over to in person, I will still do the broadcast so that they too can be a part of, of our coming together. Um, and so we're so grateful for them that come from near and far to be a part of the broadcast. And I don't ever want to waste anybody's time. Hey, Stan. Hey, Amanda. Woo -woo. Man is on. Sandra Allen. Hey, man is on. Sandra, let me tell you, girl, you did a phenomenal job singing that song yesterday, girl. Oh, my goodness. I'm just in love. Hey, Amen. With my praise team. Praise team be taking us in, man, all the way in. And thank you, Sandra, for being a part and being a strong, mighty woman of God. Thank you, an anointed woman of God. We're so grateful to have you as a member of the Greater Life Church. Now, as you come in, we're going to have some prayer. Then we're going to, I'm going to talk a teeny bit, teeny bit. You know us how I'm going to talk a teeny bit, but I'm going to talk a teeny bit. And then I'm going to bring my friends on, amen, my daughters, my sisters, amen. I'm so glad that they're here. Going to bring them on. And so they're going to come as well. Hey, Missy Massey and Keisha Rule are there, amen. Welcome to the broadcast on tonight. Now, look, um, if you have any special prayer requests that you would like for me to pray, will you add those in um, to the um, comments right now? Hey, Lisa Camper, welcome. Welcome to the broadcast. Um, I want to pray for you, and I want to remind you that on November the 5th at 10 a.m., we are going to have a powerful prayer um, gathering with the women. I'm saying it's powerful. I want you to be there. Put it on your schedule to be there. Hey, my sister Melanie. Hey, uh, Mother Inez. Welcome to the broadcast. Put it on your schedule for November the 5th. We're going to have a powerful prayer time with the sisters. It ain't nothing like when some women get together and pray, man. I'm telling you, we about to bring down some strongholds and cancel some assignments of the enemy, amen. Decree and declare a thing over your life and lay hands, amen. I know it's going to be a blessed time. So I'm praying that you will bring your friends, you'll bring your sister friends, you'll come and be a part. Don't stay home. Hey, Sherry, so good to see you on tonight. Welcome to the sisterhood. Now put up your request if you have any requests that you want me to pray as I began to pray. TT, how you doing? TT Mason in the house. So glad to have you in the house as well. Pray for Sandra, Brian, Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you as humble as we know how. God, we come thanking you and praising you for who you are, God. God, you are a healer. You are a keeper. You are a way maker. You are our peace. You are Jehovah Gabor. You are Jehovah Nancy, our victory banner. And we give you praise and we honor you, God. Hallelujah. There is none like you in all the earth, God. How 
awesome. How great are you, God? How amazing you are, God. You are an amazing God. Oh, God, you are so good and you are worthy to be praised. So we give you all praise. We give you all glory and we give you honor. We can't do anything without you. We can't have this broadcast without you. We can't even pray without you, God. We can't move without you, God. We stand still and see in the salvation of the Lord because, God, you have power in your hands, God. You have all might in your hands, God. You know how to heal. You know how to comfort. You know how to deliver. So, God, we come to you, God, and we stand. God, do what you want to do in our lives. We avail ourselves and we say, help us, God. Help us be the women that you're calling us to be. Help us to be holy. Help us to reverence you, God. Help us, God, to be respectful of one another. Help us, God, hallelujah, to honor you with our bodies, with our minds. Oh, my God, help us to honor you, God, with our conversation in the name of Jesus. God, as I start praying for these that are sending up prayer requests, we pray for Sandra Bryant who lost her daughter. God, you know the pain that she's experiencing and we pray for your comfort to go there and comfort her in her grieving time, God. In the name of Jesus, those all that have lost loved ones, we pray for their comfort. We pray, God, that you'll wrap your arms around them and let them know that you're there with them, God, and you're going to get them through this valley, God. In Jesus' name, we pray for patience for, amen, um, those that are seeking you for patience, God. Let patience have its perfect work in them in Jesus' name, that they may grow and be what you're calling them to be. I pray for families, God. I pray, God, families are under attack. Oh, my God. Divorce is on an all-time high, God, and things are going um, awry in the home, God, with our children, God, and I'm praying against the attack of the enemy, God, that would continue to try to pray on our families that will continue to try to break us up in our families, God. And I pray that you will bind us together with cords of love that cannot be broken. We bind the spirit of abuse. We bind it in Jesus' name that we won't stand for abuse and abusive relationships in the name of Jesus. Show us the way, God, how to move from those things that hurt us or harm us, God, in Jesus' name so we can experience your joy. We can experience your peace, God, in Jesus' name. So we pray for families that you would help Help us, God, to love one another, to communicate, to talk with one another in Jesus' name. We're praying for our daughters and our sons, God, in Jesus' name. We're praying, God, that you would keep them from danger and you would keep them from the streets and drugs, God, and violence in Jesus' name. Even as we go to the store, Walmart and Target, God, in the mall, God, cover us in the blood from people that would try to hurt us, malicious acts against us, God, rob us or steal steal our cars and our vehicles. We go to the bank, cover us in the blood. In the name of Jesus, cover our children when they go to school. God, oh my God, this world has turned upside down. But you said, if my people who are called by the, your name will humble ourselves, God, we humble ourselves to the point that we know we can't do it without you. To the point that we call on your name and we say, Heavenly Father, help us. We are in need of your help in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we recognize we can't do anything without you. So God, come now, God. Come in our schools. Come in our homes. Come in our finances. Come in our ministries. Come now, God. Take full control of our lives. Holy Spirit, activate and have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name, God. Our world, God, is in chaotic situation. God, there's so much going on in the world that's broken, God. And God, you know, God, how to fix it. You know how to keep us from the dangers of the world. So God, you said in your word that this will happen in the last days, God. God, help us to realize it's the last days and help us, God, to pray that many will come to you, God, that they will be saved, God, from this treacherous world in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, and we praise you. We give you all the glory and the honor. Now, bless this broadcast. Be a part of it. Be of all of it, God. God, we need you to word our mouths. We need you to speak through us, God. We need the women to be helped and motivated and encouraged to go out and do the same. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We give you praise. We love you. We lavish love on you as you have lavished your love on us, God. What can separate us from the love of God? God, no thing will separate you from loving us and help nothing to separate us 
from loving you, God. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, glory, and honor. Now, come on, everybody. Just do your hand claps. Send your hallelujahs. Sing it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. God is good and he is worthy to be praised. Like I said earlier, amen, we're going to talk about being agents of transformation. Too many times God has done great things in our lives. Too many times God has bought us out of darkness and bought us out of things that we've been a part of that God spared our lives from. And too many times we keep silent. We don't go out and we don't tell a dying world that Jesus saves. We don't tell a dying world that Jesus loves them. You know, for so many years of my Christian life, people will always condemn you and send you to hell before they would tell you that God just loves you. Hallelujah. Bible bashing. We're not here to Bible bash anybody. We're here to tell them that God loves you and it is his will that none should perish, but all should come into repentance. That's right. Amen. The broken person, the mean person, the evil person, it's God's will that they will come into your co-worker, your boss, amen. It's God's will, amen, that they will be saved, amen. So you're looking for what the will of God is in your life. God is looking to transform you so that you can help transform others, amen. Even the unlovely, even, even the person that treats you bad, amen. Those are the people that God is looking, amen, to bring, amen, to him. And maybe sometimes he can, will bring them to him, through you, <laughs> my God, and this be the very person you think ain't no help, ain't no way they're gonna be right. But let me tell you, God got a way, amen, that we don't even know. Our thoughts are not his thoughts, and our ways are not his ways, amen. So you gotta get that out your mind when you think you know more than God knows. You do not, and then you don't think like God thinks. And so the scripture in Romans 12 and 2 says, as we transform to help others transform others we help we transform to help transform others agents of transformation and romans 12 and 2 says don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world come on we talked about this how we can't copy what the world is doing we can't be a, a like the world amen the bible tells us to come out from among them and be separate people should know that you there's a difference in your life do people know that you there's a difference in your life? When you walk into a room, do people know something about that girl? When you walk in, man, and you deal with your coworkers, do they know something is different about that girl? When you out just hanging out with your girlfriends, do people know something about that girl, amen? Do they know, amen, that you're different because you've come out from among them and you've been separated uh, for the work of the Lord? So it says that we should not copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. Hallelujah. Every day, God wants to transform your mind. And it's a transformation. It's a process. It's day by day. The things you used to do, you don't want to do them no more because you stay connected to God. And as long as you stay connected to God, there'll be a transformation happening every day. I'm saying something really powerful right there. As long as you stay connected to God, Every day, there'll be a transformation. That's why you can't quit or give up or look down on yourself and say, I'm nothing. I'm never going to be nothing. I'm never going to add up to be anything. The devil is a liar. Every day, transformation is taking place in your life if you stay connected to God. So God wants to transform you. God wants, let God, let God, not me, not somebody else, not even yourself. You got to let God transform you because what you think it should look like is not what God thinks it should look like. That's why sometimes when you think I got it all together, God said, uh-uh, that's not what I want. The potter comes and breaks that down, amen, and starts reshaping it all over again. That's why if you let God do it, amen, maybe you won't experience so much pain. That's why if you let God do it, maybe you won't experience so much anguish. You got to let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. That's how God's going to change you. Amen. By changing, transforming, you, by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will. When you let God transform you, then you will know God's will. Women, I'm talking to you. Women of God, I am talking to you tonight that we always search for what the will of God is in our life. And I want to submit to you tonight that one of the main purposes in your life is that God will transform you and use you to help transfer of transform others. You are an agent of transformation. Come on, I need you to type that. I am 
an agent of transformation. Amen. That when you out on your own agenda, God will slip. What's the word I'm trying to say? Change the switch. Switch the switch. Switch to whatever I'm trying to say. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Amen. God will flip the switch. There it goes. Amen. You think you just out there doing what you want to do. And God will flip the switch. Amen. And calls you to be used for his glory. Calls you, amen, to be on an assignment. You just out there thinking, I'm just out here. And God said, no, this is an assignment. This is a God assignment. Amen. Because you are an agent of transformation. As God has transformed you, now he can use you to transfer, transform others. Then you will learn God's will for you. What is good, pleasing, and perfect. And what is good, pleasing and perfect to God is that when he can use you to minister to some other sister, to minister to some other child, to minister to some other brother and bring them to Christ. Amen. So if you ever want to know, what am I here for? What am I doing? What am I supposed to be doing? Yeah, that's it. You're an agent of transformation. And I love it. Amen. Apostle preached a great message on yesterday. And so I'm not going to take up all that time preaching what he preached. Go back and check that out. Today, we're going to do something a little different. I got two agents of transformation with me tonight. That's right. Hallelujah. God is working on their lives, transforming them. And now here they are tonight to share with us, amen, what that looks like, what that has been like, amen, as God has transformed them and now using them for agents of transformation. I think I said all the things I want to say. Of course, you know, I got a lot more to say, amen, uh, but I'm going to bring them on. And it's the person of, amen, um, here she comes. Let me just pull her up here. Keisha Rule, y'all. Y'all know Keisha from South Carolina. She's still up tonight, y'all, because she is an agent of transformation. Amen. God just used her just recently, and I asked her to come on the broadcast. And then here it goes, my daughter, Macy Massey, y'all, an agent of transformation. Amen. She's excited about what God is doing in her life, y'all. And I'm telling you, God is turning these ladies around, turning them upside down, man. I'm telling you, using them burning passion in their hearts, amen, that they can be used by God. And so, Keisha, I want you to um, talk first, just introduce yourself, and I want you to talk a little bit on what happened, how we remove her. She went down. Let me pull her, but let me pull her back up. Let's see where she is. Add you to the stream, Keisha. There you go, baby. Let me see. I think I like that. I like that one. All right, Keisha. Keisha is right here. Keisha, talk to us a little bit. Tell us about yourself, and I want you to share with um the sisters what you share with me when you first got on the broadcast when it was just time for to pull you in and i'm telling you it was wonderful come on share that um good evening everyone so happy to be here uh i was telling pastor um that first of all i've known pastor and apostle for about 16 years now but since the pandemic we really started getting closer and um i was just telling her that this is the first time in my life that I actually love me. I love everything about me and I'm enjoying life. I was walking around in a constant state of condemnation about everything and just low self-esteem, self-loathing, everything was wrong about me. I couldn't find anything good about me, could never see the beauty in me. and. This is the first time in my life this weekend I was really thinking that um, and we'll talk about that more later. But, you know, I was having fun and I was like, this is what life is supposed to be like. It was awesome. All right. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, I want you to share um, your transformation story if you want to share that. But more importantly, we know that you've been transformed. I want you to share what happened this weekend um, as well. This weekend, well, kind of last week, I went on my first girls' trip. It was me and my best friend. We went to Vegas to go see Usher, and um, it was really fun. I've never done anything like that. I was um, in this relationship, and I was made to believe that, you know, Christian women, you know, don't do certain things, and, you know, it's not um, holy to, like, go out and have this kind of fun and do these kind of things, although I'm not drinking, not drugging, just, you know, hanging out with girls, and, you know, a Christian woman is supposed to be at home taking care of her children and taking care of her husband and praying, like, this is what Christian women do, so this was my life, so this was my first girl trip, and, um, 
it started like on Wednesday. Wednesday was like my first real day there. And God is so good because anybody who knows me, they know I make a schedule. Like we're going by this schedule. This is what we're going to do. And we have to be on time. I'm in the, I used to be in the military, so we have to be on time. And so my best friend was like, we ain't doing no schedule. We were supposed to go to lunch around 11 o'clock. We didn't leave out until 1245. And I was like, oh my God, we off the schedule. But um, we ended up going to a Mexican restaurant and I hate Mexican food. I mean, all of these things just let me know that God was in this. So we ended up going to a Mexican restaurant. And when we walked in, the, the waiter was like, well, how many? And my best friend said two, but it was this, this young girl behind us. She's 21 years old. She was standing behind us. And, um, and they was like, oh, I thought it was three. I was like, it can be three. You want to have lunch with us? And then she was like, I don't know, I might. And I was like, you should just come on and have lunch with us. So she was like, okay. And she came to our table. We started having lunch. We ate. I started sharing things about myself. She started sharing things about herself. We all started sharing. Everybody started crying. Um, and we ended up spending the whole day together. I mean, for well, let me just stop you right there, Keisha. Can I stop you right there? Because you did one of the first things, you second things in the blessed principle that we talk about uh, beginning with prayer, listening to each other, and then you ate with somebody. You brought them into your fellowship. And that's a good start for um, agents of transformation that we learn how to be a little bit more open to the voice of the Holy Spirit and a little bit more greetable so that we can now sit down with people and fellowship with them. And then as y'all talking, y'all listening and y'all crying together, man, that's just already God working um, in the midst. So go ahead and finish that. It's very good. Well, I found out that she's a college student. She goes to Clark University in in Atlanta or somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had a long layover in Vegas. So she was going to be there until 11 o'clock at night. She's walking around with suitcases, neck pillows, everything. And I'm like, you're just going to walk around with all this stuff? So I took her back to my um suite. I let her put her stuff down and I said, you can just hang out with us today. So, um, and I didn't make her pay for anything, you know, uh, cause I know she's a college student. So we did a lot of fun stuff. We did the gondola, we shopped, we did a lot of good stuff. And um, I'm always looking for opportunities to, to share pe- share Christ with people. But my philosophy more than anything is I just want people to see Christ in me. And mm-hmm. so the opportunity oh. opened up we were um, shopping and she was looking at some Buddhist, you know, things. And I was like, oh, are you Buddhist? And she's like, you know, I don't really, you know, have a religion. And I was like, well, why not? Were you raised like that? Or did um, you have a bad experience? She told me she was raised Jehovah Witness, but she had a bad experience. She said, she first asked me, how do you feel about counseling? And I told her, I'm a therapist. I'm a psychologist. I don't I don't see a problem with it. We all need people to talk to sometimes. And if that's your means, then that's fine. And she was like, she went to go see several therapists. She so, t- told me some things that she was dealing with. She went to go see several therapists and they just kept shoving religion down her throat. You need to get your life together. Are you going to hell? And, you know, you got to do this. And this is not God's will. And that resonated with me because I remember, and I shared with you, Pastor, when I came out there, I thought that I was going to hell because I'm not doing things the way that other people want me to do them. So that condemnation. And and I told her, just like I told you guys, like, um, I am a Christian and I love the Lord. And I believe that I want people to see the love of God through me, through my actions, how I treat you. So just like I've been loving on you all day long, that's how God wants to love on you. Yeah. And she told me, and she told me um, that meant so much to her because um, when she told her mother what she was doing, you know, with Jeffrey Dahmer movie and all this stuff being out, they was just worried about her just coming along with some strange um, woman. And she was like, mom, you know, I just, I just feel like this is right. I feel like everything was meant to be. And we, we just had a long conversation all day long up until nine o'clock at night. 
till it was time for her to go to her flight. And every day, every morning, I remind her about how beautiful she is. Even to this day, I keep in contact with her and I see how she's doing and how things are going in college. And I drop those little nuggets about God in there because I don't want to beat her over the head. But I think that she really does see. And she told me her roommates are Christian and then she met me. And, and it's just, you know, it's just God is leading her to him. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. Oh my, what a beautiful testimony of love. How being an agent of transformation is more than just sharing your story, but it's fellowshipping, listening, praying for them, um, just sharing what's going on in their lives, causing them to draw more to God um, and want the love of God, seeing you in action. You know, one of my favorite songs is from high school. And my, my high school song is action, action. We want action. Mm, mm, mm. Said it, said it, said it's faction. That's what we used to sing when we was on, you know, the basketball field. And um, they on the basketball grounds. I don't know what to call it right now. You know, and so we would be out there. And that is what I'm always saying. I'm saying that to the women of God that are here on today. I wanted you to share that testimony because it means nothing for us to be silent. It means nothing for us not to allow God to use us, amen, in a way that people will see the love of God, especially if they already are filled with um, being bashed and false things. And now here you come with just pure, genuine love to love on her and to show. There goes Katrina. Thank you. You know, my words is just lost court in basketball. Can court. I say I'm one more thing? Yes, yes. Um, just about the agent of change, I, I want to thank you for allowing God to use you as an agent um, of change as well. Because um, before like the COVID and the sisterhood and coming on to the Bible studies at night, I never believed that um, my prayers meant anything. I never believed that I could be effectual in the relationship that I was in. Something he used to tell me all the time. You know how you, you, you tell somebody, I'm going to pray for you. And he used to be like, you need to stop saying that because you know your prayers don't go no higher than the ceiling. So mm -hmm. I always felt like self-conscious about praying. I felt like, you know, I didn't have the words to pray, but God has always laid it on my heart to help women or to minister to women because of all the things that I've been through in my life. And now I actually feel like I believe that I'm, I'm supposed to do that. I mean, Absolutely. he told me that, but now I actually believe that I can do that. So yeah. um, I'm thankful for that. Yes, your prayers are heard by God. Amen. And you got to continue to let God use you. Now, we're going to talk about some other stuff that's going to um, answer some of those questions that, we, that we're going to talk about. Um, but I want to get to Nisi Massey. So thank you, Keisha. Don't go anywhere. That was a beautiful testimony. Oh, my God, what a blessing to be a blessing to someone else, the agent of transformation you are. And so come on, Nisi Massey, come on in. Um, how are you this evening? I am doing great. I'm excited to be here. So thank you for having me, Pastor. Hello, all of my sisters. All right. Missy, talk to us about um, transformation in your life. What that look like? Um, tell us, do you feel transformed? Tell us where you are. Yes, I do. Oh, my goodness. I can just, ha I have so many things in my life that I have been transformed in in so many different ways. Um, but I just want to say that transformation looks like being secure, being grateful. You know, um, before I was the agent of transformation, my life was a mess. You know, I felt like I was broken. I felt like I didn't have anything to say. And honestly, I was just on a long road to nowhere. You know, you constantly get your heart broken, you're constantly down, and you feel like life is beating you up, however you feel hopeless, you know? And I feel like being in God, being consistent was one of the main things. Like, even before I felt transformation, I just kept showing up. I just kept showing up. I kept, I stayed consistent. I stayed coming to church even when I had one of the nights, transparent, transparently, I had a night that was one of the worst nights of my life. It was awful. And we were having a New Year's Eve service. And I had every reason, every way, every right to say, I'm going to stay home. I'm going to stay home. But I didn't. I showed up. And in the midst of, God, uh, midst of that, God just kept changing me, transforming me. He would work on my heart. 
He worked on my mind. He will work on the way I see things, the way I communicate. Every area was transformed. So it wasn't an overnight magical process, but God worked on every piece of me and still is working on me to just transform my thought process, the way I love, the way I speak, the way I view situations. So the transformation is truly personal to me because I know that it works. I know that someone else being transformed like pastor or our old member, Victoria, or even apostle, those people's lives being transformed to touch in my life helps me be transformed and touch someone else. So I truly believe in the power of transformation. Yeah. Yeah. Tell, um, I want you to share the story about, um, well, and because I want to say this first before we say that, um, when Mies used to come to Greater Life five years ago, um, every time she would show up, Keisha and everybody else, ladies, I didn't know who she was because every day she would look different. Like God had already started the transformation before it started in her mind. It started happening in her face and her actions. And I was like, who is that lady? Is that this lady? Is that the same lady? Is that the same lady? So sometimes when you don't even know God is changing you, God is already, God is at work changing you. He meant it, amen, to turn out just like it's going, amen. And so to God be the glory, because so many times we try to fix it ourselves and God said, no, no, let me do it. And when God does it, he does a good work, amen, at transforming us. Here, here's what the here's where I'm going with this all of this too. Um, Apostle said his bottom line yesterday is spiritual transformation leads to a lifestyle of fruitful manifestation. I, I want to say it because that's what I see when I see these two women on the from different walks, a man came to greater life at different times, came in my life at different times, but I see a full manifestation. Woo! a transformation in these ladies' lives, you know, and I'm so godly proud of them. I, I, I love when I talked to Keisha tonight, and the first thing I said, how you doing? She said, I feel so good. I, I, I love myself. Oh, my God, that's a transformation. I'm like, yes, Jesus, amen. And so when, when I talked to Misi today, and she's so excited about the word and excited about every time she reads her Bible, and I'm just like, God, this is a manifestation of transformation and I, I like the definition that says spiritual transformation leads to a lifestyle that's where that agent of transformation because i'm not just transformed for myself i'm not just transformed when you see me but my lifestyle amen has been transformed it's a lifestyle that, that means when i go to las vegas and i just think i'm on a trip just a girl's trip and god sends me an assignment and I take that as something that's because that's in your lifestyle. Your mind has been transformed, man. I want to just give y'all an applause today, amen, and tell you, amen, how godly proud I am, amen, that you live in a lifestyle of fruitful manifestation that other people can see. I wanted to bring you on the broadcast. I know there's many women on this broadcast, amen, that have been transformed. Oh, they're, they're, and even if you don't see it, amen, God is working in your heart. God is working on your mind to transform you so that you can live a lifestyle of transformation. And when you live in a lifestyle, people around you are affected. You can't get away from it. When you when you think you, like I said, I, I love your, your testimony again. When you think you're just on vacation, God be like, uh-uh, you're here for this. When you think you just go up for one thing, God said, uh-uh, you're here for this, amen. Y'all heard Apostle testimony how he went home with me because I thought we needed to go. And God used him on that assignment for his nephew. And it was such an awesome um, thing how God used him. So when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. Come on, ages of transformation. You are God's true disciples. Um, and this brings God great glory to our father. And so I'm so grateful. Now, here's the question that I want to ask. I want to get to this part because Apostle talked about it. He talked about three points. He talked about it's personal. He talked about it's um, practical. And then he talked about it's powerful. And I, I wanted to talk to the ladies tonight and say, talk to us about your personal life. How What are you doing in your personal life that's causing you to grow? Because sometimes people think it's going to happen by osmosis, but it is personal. And when I, I didn't know where Apostle was going with that when he said it's personal until he started talking about how it's personal, the relationship you have with God, mm -hmm. um, that personal relationship that, amen, causes you to be an agent of transformation in a great way. So tell me, um, transparent moments, 
what your personal time with God is like that causes your life, amen, to continue to go, amen, in the direction that's going, causing you to be an aid in the transformation. Who wants to go first? Um, I can take it away. Um, so it is personal because, uh, wow. So number one, stand in the word, because every time you read the word, something will jump out to just ignite that fire again and again and again. And then being transparent with help. So being able to have an accountability person to keep you accountable on reading your word because you can get tired. We we can get tired, oh we can get lazy, we can get overwhelmed, we can get busy. Life gets busy. Transparently, I just had a baby four months ago now and life got busy fast. But having that accountability partner to say, hey, even though you're busy, you have to keep your spirit man fed. Um, yeah. so consistent to um services so i got back to church like four weeks later i was like i can't do this i'm ready to go back to church so i stayed in service even if i was tired even if i felt like i don't know why i'm here i stayed consistent to that um and reading devotionals honestly just one short devotional a day can change your life it gets you excited especially because you can read targeted devotional so if you're feeling overwhelmed, they have devotionals for that. If it's about marriage, you have devotionals for that. Even to learn about who God is, and that will just transform you all by yourself. Because I was, I've been reading this devotional, and I love to share this because it really speaks about where I am right now. And it was just talking about that um, who God is is who I am. He He is so He is faithful. He is whole. He is He is a healer. So I am healed. Everything that God is, I am. So to say that lets me know that I'm transformed because anything I thought I was, I'm not. I am who God says I am. So yeah. things like that just keeps you in a transformation mindset to keep moving forward. Okay. So your personal time is devotionals, reading your word on a daily basis. That's what keeps you connected and stay. I like what you said, um, staying connected in your in ministry and, at, you know, coming to hear the word. And the last thing that I love that you said is having an accountability, somebody to, account, to hold you accountable for, are you reading and pushing you down deeper in your reading time? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That is, that's how you're going to, when you have that personal time with God, that's what's going to cause you, amen, to rise up and be an agent of transformation. Come on, Keisha, share with us. What do you do that's personal? Um, for me, um, Nisi hit a lot of those things. Um, but first, everything starts with prayer. Like I said before, I had um, uh, intimidation about prayer. Um, I thought that maybe you had to say certain words and, you know, you had to say it a certain way and I wasn't eloquent enough. And just when I started really um, just praying to God and, and also not praying, but taking that time to listen to him, it just changed my life. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that my prayer life has grown so much and I see the fruit of that. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing is... Uh, and I shared this with you before, when something drops in my spirit and you know you've been around me, if I feel like I need to stop what I'm doing right there in that moment and pray, like that's what I'm going to do. Um, just stop, just stop, pray because God is speaking in that moment and I don't want to miss the moment. The word, the word is the mirror that I hold myself to. Like I look in the word and it, it tells me the direction that I'm supposed to go, go to. It jumps out at me, just like Nisi said. Um, it gives me that encouragement that I need. And um, just being transparent as well, just like she said, um, sometimes the enemy will have you thinking that you're the only person going through this and you're oh, the only yeah. one that has to deal with this. And you're the Trap. only one whose husband is acting up right now. But that's not true. Like we all go through things. And I really believe that iron does sharpen iron because when I talk to someone about what I'm going through, even if they're going through something, they can encourage me. I can encourage them. And so as sisters, we absolutely need that because God didn't create any of us to be alone, to be yeah. isolated. We are all one body and we need each other. So just tapping into those resources, um, it has really helped me a lot. 
Very good. So personal, you know, one of some of the personal things I do is um, in the morning and I started this new thing, uh, Katrina Arnold and Minister Brooks, we are, I'm still doing it. I don't know about them, but um, um, I, I wake up in the morning and I read my Bible, my Bible scripture for me for the day. And many of you know that for years and years, I journal um, the scripture that I read and then I take out of that soap. And I say, um, what is this scripture? What is my observation? What is my application? And what is my prayer for today? So that I'm praying the scripture, I'm praying the word of whatever I've read uh, for the day. And so that's one of my ways of keeping it personal. And I talk to God uh, without ceasing, I pray, <laughs> amen, in the shower, out the shower, um, um, if I get on the prayer call while I'm walking, amen, I'm talking to God because I know that I cannot do anything without him. And so I try to keep my life connected to God by staying in prayer. And, you know, we, we talked about our phones, how we pick up our phones. We look at our phone so much. So we said, and hey, what if we looked at the scripture every time we picked up our phone? I've been in that thing doing it. So every time I pick up my phone, I remember, oh, I got to look at my scripture because I picked up my phone again. And I'm telling you, it does something to you. Amen. Either you're going to stop picking up your phone all the time or you're going to love reading that scripture each and every time. And so that's just taking us deeper. Amen. You, you get it. You go, the deeper you go, the more foundation you can build in there. Amen. The taller your building can get and the more your relationship with God grows. Amen. And that's what's important, ladies. If you're going to be an agent of transformation, you have to do those things to build that relationship with God so that, amen, God can use you, amen. Tap you on the shoulder and say, Keisha, you. Tap you on the shoulder and say, Misi, you. Tap you on the shoulder and say, Sharon, you. Amen. You can hear God and that you are getting those things um, solidified in your life so that you can be an agent of transformation. It can't just be about you. It is about building my spiritual man, but more than that, even with that, or I should say, it's about causing somebody else's life to be changed because my life has been changed in the time that I spend with God. And so it is personal. Amen. And we got to have that personal relationship. You know, so many times we rolled on the uh, coattails of our uh, moms or rolled on the coattails of our great of auntie and and this person is christian so i'm christian and we never know nothing for ourselves amen the preacher be throwing out scriptures and we just catching them we don't even know if he's telling it right amen until you finally get to that place where you say wait a minute i need a personal relationship with god i need to know him for myself i need to know that if i get sick he is a healer. I need to know if I need to be delivered. He delivers. I need to know, amen, that if something steals my peace, that he's Jehovah Shalom. I need to know that for myself so that when I'm by myself, I can call on him by myself, amen, and he shows up. And so you, we got a personal God who wants to have a personal relationship with us. And then once again, if we're going to be transformed and be agents of transformation, we got to have that personal relationship with God, amen. So thank you for sharing that. So now now, my next question to you is, uh, Apostle said, is practical. That being an agent of transformation um, comes with practicality, just being practical. I like what you said earlier, Keisha, when you said the young lady was like, many people have shoved the Bible down. You go on to hell. You can, that, that's not practical at all. That's Bible bashing. You're going to lose people. So either, either one of you or both things, um, what's the practical ways you use to um, bring people to the Lord? Or what's a practical way somebody used to bring you to the Lord? What, what What's your stories there? What do you have? Keisha, go ahead and go first this time. Um, I think it's um, just like how I've always been saying, like, you don't, and pa um, Pastor, you say this and Apostle says this all the time. You don't need a pulpit to, like, preach to people. Um, your life is the, the greatest testimony that anybody could ever, you know, have. And um, a lot of times it's the first experience that people will have with God. And so I don't know if it's unfortunate or fortunate, but, like, I've been through a lot of things. And many of those things, it's you know that it was God because it's no other way that it could have worked out the way that it worked out. Um, another testimony for another time. But um, people see that in my life, like you went through that um, and you didn't lose your mind. You went through that. Um, even m my mother was on her deathbed and they told me to prepare for her death. And I said, um, not so. God didn't speak that to me. And I prayed for hours and he gave her two more years of life. Mm. So 
Um, mm. Just things like that, that I know it was nothing else but God. And people see that. They see my faith. They see my belief. They see um, my lifestyle. And so I think that's the practical aspect of it to me. I got in my own head thinking that I had to be deep. And um, he used, my my spouse used to always tell me I had to be like Juanita Bynum. Um, one of the reasons why he says he's divorcing me is because I'm not spiritual enough. And so I went through my life, you know, trying to be like Juanita Bynum, trying to preach mm -hmm. like her and teach like her. But that's not mm -hmm. my style, you know. That's mm -hmm. not the way that I, I reach and, and teach. So um, just being me and recognizing that the traps of the enemy so that I don't fall into those, those are my practical aspects. That was so good. Oh, my goodness. Woo, that was a blessing, amen. Just not comparing yourself with other people and just doing it the way God said. You know, lots of people used to say, you're not a regular first lady. You're not a regular. I'm good. I'm doing a good job then. If I'm not the <laughs> regular one, then I'm doing good because I'm being who God created me to be because people need just the, the raw you, the, the real you, the practical you, not always this deep, person. Now somebody wrote this. Sometimes your life is the only Bible that people will ever read. So let your light shine before men. That's the scripture that I was going to give. Amen. Matthew 5 and 16 it said in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father, which is in him. They see the good things that you do. They see the service that you give. They see how you lead others. Amen. That you're not always trying to be the, the big cheese. Amen. Many times at greater life, greater love ministry you know we've been apostle pastor for two and a half years over in panama and i think our our church was called um, the rodman pentecostal service amen and then we came here and we had greater love and then we had greater life and um i always have served in ministry just i just want to serve i'm just here to help amen and if you can't serve how can you lead amen and so most definitely you got to let your light shine so people can see that and glorify your father. Come on, Missy, talk to us. Practical. Oh, man, it is practical in so many ways. I mean, it's the way that you carry yourself. But one of my favorite scriptures is with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Mm -hmm. And so one of the ways that I love to let my light shine or show that I'm transformed is to love everyone regardless, no judgment, no anything, but I just want to show you love because that's what God showed me. And mm -hmm. um, so even in our in our family, and I'll just be transparent and say, sometimes family is the hardest people <laughs> to show that you are transformed. Not that you're showing them, but they'll Maybe. test you every day, yeah. every time you talk yeah. to them. However, the consistency of knowing that I'm not playing, I'm not who I was, because they see you way before God transformed you. So sometimes, you know, we used to call it the scuba diving saints, the ones that want to go back to what you did and say that you are incredible. But it's because of what I've been through that I can let you know. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I would just say that I'm consistent and, and never, never allowing my flesh to get in front of what God wants me to do. So even when it comes to family members calling me late at night, asking for money or even just for prayer, I stay consistent in that. And before I do anything, let's pray because it's the power of God. It's not through me. Even the uh -huh. money that I have, it's not because of me. It's because of what God has given me. So uh -huh. I want you to know before I see this cash app that it's because of God that I'm sending it to you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes, you're honestly. good. Let me tell you, let me tell you, I, I have the Holy Spirit. Man, God knows I know. But before I tell you when people irritate you the wrong way, that flesh be like, woo, it'll rise up there. And thank God for the Holy Spirit, Keisha. Because I mean, the Holy Spirit taps Sharon Davis on the shoulder and be like, don't don't say that. That one that's in your mind right there. Don't <laughs> let your light so shine right now. And I'm telling you, you the light gotta come on bright, like woo, because you be ready to give it to them. So thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's what holds us. That's what keeps us. Um, the times when you raging and you people done said it the wrong way or did something the wrong way and and because you're an agent of transformation and you don't want to lose amen your credibility you don't want to lose your 
You don't want to lose your witness with people on your job. We lose our witness because people get us mad and we go off, we cuss and we throw things and they be like, what in the world? Amen. But making sure that you every day, I say this to the ladies every day, ladies, Holy Spirit activate. You need the Holy Spirit to activate every day, every hour when somebody is acting up in your life. Holy Spirit. Activate. Because if you don't call on the Holy Spirit, this flesh is an unruly participant. It will rise up and it will talk before you know it. Like, oh, did I say that? Yeah, you did. And so you don't want, you want the love of God. You want the grace of God, the mercy of God to be in your life so that you can, amen, um, help people to come to the Lord and not get people away. Because people are waiting for the opportunity to accuse God of not being real because of the life we live. Oh, yeah. wow. I said a lot. I said a mouthful. Yeah. They're waiting to crucify Christ. Um, our lives, amen. If our lives don't live according to the will of God, amen, we crucify Christ afresh. We make his crucifixion look like none avoid, amen. That it, there's no, it wasn't important, but it was important that Jesus died for me. And so it's important for me to stay personal with God, stay connected to the Holy Spirit so that I can do what God wants me to do and I can let my light shine every day. And so, amen, when you mess up, just repent, ladies. Don't hold it to yourself. Don't, don't be falling on hold and fall out and faint. Amen. All of us at times have messed up. Amen. All of us at times have let the flesh have its way. Amen. And thank the Lord for God's mercy and grace that brings us back on. So that's just transparent. I love what you ladies are sharing because it's just transparent. Come on, Misi, what you said, what you're telling us. I just wanted to comment on that one thing you said that it's okay to mess up and that, you know, sometimes you have to separate from people in order to stay credible because we are every, we're always learning. And especially when we're in that, that new transformation state, sometimes separation, not isolation, but separation from the things that tempt you that, you know, swing like a dingling light that you're trying to grab. You have to separate from those things so that God can really do the work because staying attached to it, it will, it will hold you. You won't be okay. free enough. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. not to very good. Very good. Keisha, you look like you wanted to say something right there. I was just thinking about that, that night at your, uh, at your table. Um, when I, I couldn't separate myself from that because I thought that that was, that was God's will for me. But, um, I, I'm thankful that, um, I, I learned the truth and that I learned the light because where would I be still attached to something that God didn't want me to be attached to? So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. you'd be missing out on that, that love you have for yourself. And the joy that you're experiencing and the life and life more abundantly that God promised us. Amen. God promised us that we would have life here on this earth and eternal life with him. And so if abundant life don't look like the beat down. Abundant life don't look like the abuse. But that's not what God's best is for us. Amen. And so the sooner we realize that God, you you want to use me for How could you ever be used for an agent of transformation? Um and, and not have the joy of the Lord or not care about people's lives because your life is so um, beat down or in trouble. And so I'm encouraging you ladies, amen. Um, don't let the devil beat you down. Don't let the devil make you feel like you're not important or that you don't have anything or that God doesn't love you. That's a lie from the pit, amen, that you have to be like somebody else. Thank you so much, Keisha, for being transparent and sharing that. Thank you, Misi, for talking about how it's important to separate, amen, from some things so that you can shine and be what God wants you to be. That's so important because so many women on here stay through things and go through things that they don't necessarily have to be a part of. So they, and it keeps them in bondage and not allow them to be agents of transformation. Come on, Keisha. I think it's also like you made a great point about how um, ministry doesn't look one way. Like you don't have to do things the way that somebody else did it. Um, that doesn't mean that you're not saved. That doesn't mean that you're not holy. Um, you're just doing it a different kind of way. It reminds me like um, when Kirk Franklin first came out and everybody said like his music was, um, was, was too worldly, but um, you don't, it's, you can't put God in a box. 
um, I can minister the way that I was designed to minister and I am still a woman of God. I'm still mm -hmm. saved. Um, and I think that was the thing that kept me bound for so long, thinking that um, the, re the religiosity of it, that you have to do things a certain way, or if you don't do it this way, then it's not of God. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. I love it, Keisha, because um, look, um, when Kurt Franklin came out with Stomp, and those type of songs, you would be surprised at how many people came over to God from his type of music. How many people were able to come to God because now they can identify. Now we, you know, we we wanna we don't wanna be like the world. We don't wanna um, start acting like we can do anything we wanna do. That that's definitely not it. But definitely, um, you gotta let God use what he put inside of you, amen, to drive. I'm, I'm going to tell you, oh, I'm going to go to the club and just sit up and drink and smoke, and that's what God's going to use to bring other people to Christ. No, y'all already know. <laughs> God is a holy God, and he wants us to be holy people. And so when we use what God gave us, amen, to help other people, agents of transformation, so many people are transformed. If that's why they got so many different churches, different churches with different pastors and different first ladies and different ministers that are there because that's the body of people that you need to belong to and that's going to help you and then that's why you come to a certain a group that i don't like her i don't like what well, they got other places that you can go to and be a part of and so once again what you said is so powerful because sometimes we get in a box i used to you know somebody said uh you were supposed to be like wanting to buy them and there was this lady who i thought i was supposed to be like you, that was so much bondage, Keisha. It is, yeah. Like I tried to, I'm, I'm going to be, I me, mean, I was making myself sick sitting up there watching it like, this is what I got to be like, man, I'm scratching my head, but I'm thinking I'm supposed to act like this person and, and this was going to help other people come to the Lord. And But when God delivered me from that, oh my God, what a great deliverance. God told me I wasn't a carbon copy of nobody. That Sharon Davis, I made you just like I made you and I'm going to use you for my glory. And I'm, Girl, I got free. Do you hear me? I got free and I'm still walking in freedom from that. Amen. Because what, who would have known that I was going to come to a Keisha? Who would have known I was going to come to a Misi or a Katrina or a Minister Brooks or any of these ladies that I've come in contact with um, if I try to be like somebody else and not just be like who I am? I'm, I'm free. Hallelujah. When the sun's set free, it's free indeed. And that's why we're going to go to this next one. We're going to get out of here. But y'all doing a phenomenal job. What about it's powerful? And the scripture that we said, Romans 1 and 16 says, why I'm not ashamed of the good news about Christ. Uh, it is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. Amen. The Jews first and also the Gentile. And so listen to this. Look, you cannot be ashamed of who God made you. You cannot be ashamed of the word of God to share the word of God. You can't let anybody pull you uh, from using God's word. Amen. It's the way you use God's word. That's why I pray for wisdom every morning. So I'm skilled in how I use it. Amen. I want to be harmless. Amen. Um, I don't want to hurt people. I don't want to make people run. Amen. But I want to use what God has given me, the word of God, to, to get people um salvation. Come on, talk to me. Talk to me, ladies. Man, I love that part, Pastor. I love it because when I hear the scripture, when it says you shouldn't be ashamed, I feel like you also can't be ashamed of your story, what God has brought you through. If we just seen Paul as just this Paul, this writing the letter, but we didn't see him as the God, the Christian killers, then we wouldn't understand the magnitude of the power that God has to deliver us from whatever we did before, whatever we were into, whatever hurt we were experiencing. That's the power of God. So although we are not ashamed of God, we can't be ashamed of our stories because that right there shows how powerful our God is. So I just want to say that I know he's powerful because of where he brought me from. So yeah. I love that part. Come on. That's come on, good. It's That's powerful. Good. Sometimes people um, want you to see them in their, um, their cleaned up state and not all the muck and the mud that God brought them out of, but you mm -hmm. absolutely need to see that part. And that's the part that breaks chains, right? Because yeah. some 
somebody else is still in that muck and somebody else is still in that mud and they don't see they don't see a way out they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel they don't think that it's possible for them to be saved but then they can see you and if you never told them hey i've been where you were at um I've been beaten over my head. I've been in condemnation. I've been in sin. I've been in fornication. I've been in whatever it is that you've been in. Um, if they don't see that and and see God and see God in you now and your glory, they're never going to be that if they don't um, if you don't tell them your story. So you have to right. Amen. That's so good. So powerful. Amen. So we're not ashamed of the good news. It's good news. This is good news that um, God's word, amen, spoke to us, amen, about Jesus and how he loved us, so loved the world. We gave our lives to him. That's powerful good news, amen. There's so many things. Sometimes we try to tell people what they can't do when they get saved and just tell them about, instead of telling them about all the things they can do when they get saved, amen, and all the benefits that you have from being a Christian woman, amen, from being a Christian man, from being a Christian, just all the benefits Amen, Amen. That we have, um, you know, back in the old days, we we threw a lot of condemnation on people. We threw a lot of things, you know, just ignorant of of what God wanted from us. But all God wants His people to know is that He loves them, and that He'll never leave them or forsake them. Amen. And that He's there. Amen. And so, most definitely, is we can't be ashamed of God's word and cannot be ashamed of our story. And I want to tell you all, thank you so much for coming on tonight with me. You've been powerful ages of transformation. Look at y'all, man. I would Who would have ever thought it? But I see God working in your lives, amen, and the powerful way that he has changed your lives. Now, I want to say to you, continue to let God use you. Continue to every day open up your availability and say, God, use me for your glory. I know that you're working on me, but while you're working on me, help me to be an agent of transformation. And I'm not just saying that to Misi and Keisha, amen, but I'm saying that to all the ladies on the broadcast. We brought you to this um, lesson today to tell you that it's um, not as possible, to tell you that it's personal. You got to have that personal relationship with God to tell you that when you're talking to somebody, just let your light shine. Just like Keisha said she did when she was at in Las Vegas, just let your light shine. And see the love, people think that something was wrong with her. Like you better watch it, she may be a Jeffrey Dahmer or something, but she's a Christian woman, <laughs> amen. And people always gonna think negative first instead of thinking of the good. And so, and it's powerful to see a life transformed uh, that does something to me. I, I live, amen, to see people bring their lives to the Lord or give their lives to the Lord or watch transformation take place in people's lives who look like they ain't never going to change, but God does it, amen, because God is the one that transforms lives. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much um, for being a part of the broadcast. Now, any one of you all want to pray before we leave, and then I want to tell the ladies, don't forget to sow your powerful seed on tonight. Sow your seed at dollar sign. Payday is here. Scrolling across the screen. Sow your seed into the women's department. Hey Amen. we got some things that we want to do. And I need you to sow your seed, your $5, your $10, your $20. And somebody may even want to sow $1,000 tonight. I don't want to limit you. Hey Amen. do what the Lord says do. Um, soon, I'm going to come back. And it may not be this year, but in the, in the year come, soon in that year, we're going to do some nursing home visits. We did it before, Katrina. Remember we did that? I don't know if you were here with us, but I... You've done a lot of visits with us. You're going to go and see, amen, some people in the nursing home, some women in the nursing home, and leave some good hope with them. And so I just need somebody to pray us out. Don't forget to sow your seed. Don't forget to meet me in prayer on the 5th of November. I'll talk about that more um, as we have time. Who's praying? I'll do it. <laughs> All right. There you go, Keith. Pray us okay. out, and we're going to get out of here. Thank you, ladies, for coming. I love you so very much. Thank you. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together as a sisterhood, oh God. We pray for each and every woman that may be listening, oh God. Let something have been said to touch their hearts and inspire them to be agents of change, oh God. Continue to stir those gifts up inside of us, oh God, so that we can go out and do your will. We continue to pray for our leader, oh God. Continue to touch Pastor and to give her the inspiration to lead us in the direction that we you want us to go. Now, be with 
each and every one of us tonight as we sleep in slumber. We love you, O oh God, and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Amen, amen. You are great women of God. I love you so much. Keep on, amen, letting God use you. See, Keisha, it's late for you, babe, but thank you for the sacrifice. We love you. Get some rest. Amen. Sweet sleep. God bless you. Thanks, Meese. Love you. Love you, Meese. Good night, everybody. I love you guys so much.